Hello, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome down to Do Go On Live at the Melbourne Comedy Festival. My name... <laughs> my name is uh, David Bowie and I'm uh, <laughs> very happy to be here tonight. No, my name is uh, Dave Warnke and I'm here with uh, Jess Perkins and Matt Stewart, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, thank you so much. What hey a pleasure. I go. told Evan on sound, he goes, do I, do I need to stop that track? I go, no, nah, it'll stop itself. <laughs> it will definitely not roll back into David Bowie and make us all look like fuckheads. <laughs> Thank but God that didn't happen. Wow. <laughs> uh, it's so good to be here. This is our live show, our last live show at the uh, Comedy Festival, guys. We are absolutely pumped, except for possibly Jess, who has... Uh, no, I'm pumped. She has some health issues today. You've got, you woke up with a terrible migraine, is that right? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, I'm speaking the mic. I was <laughs> about to speak into my drink. <laughs> is I'm this good. <laughs> I'm not good. <laughs> I'm in a world of pain. But you guys, are, you guys look great. And we're all here ready to... <laughs> I was, so I was sick now. one time, right? <laughs> one time I tried to get hashtag pray for Matt nah, going. Nah, 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 nah. And the very next week, what, uh, this is... Bullshit, Jess. <laughs> I don't believe her and I don't think you should give her any sympathy. <laughs> Look at her. Look how happy she looks. She's not sick. <laughs> Leave what me a alone. dog act. <laughs> uh, no, hey, what's good. this? What's this? Hap what's going on here? Well, we mean? do have a uh, fourth chair here, ladies and gentlemen, because tonight, or this afternoon rather, we have a very special guest. Could you please... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it is not David Bowie, but it is someone equally as cool. Would you please give it up for, you know it from the Weekly Planet podcast, it is Nick Mason, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa! What? 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 Nah, Are you I booing, can't. sir? It's, it's tradition, it's fine. It's tradition. I know my lot in life. Do you, do you often get booed on the street? Yeah, I, do, I demand it. That's, it's part, it was part of my rider, didn't you read that? I want some booers around as we leave. Boo! Boo. Thank you, thank you. Uh, it's, great, it's great to be back, guys. I'm your Ringo star. It's, uh... Yes, you are still alive. That's Correct, right. yeah. <laughs> you, you will outlive uh, two of us. But oh, maybe oh not... who? No, Shotgun living lo longer than Matt? No. Yes! <laughs> Jess, you're the, the health-riddled yeah. problems. Pro yeah, that oh, makes no. sense. Anyway, uh, great to be here. Uh, Mace, are, are you well? I'm under the weather because it's the last day of festival, but other than Aww. that, I don't even do comedy. I don't understand. Pray for Mesa. <laughs> Thank you, if you could. Oh, no. <laughs> if we... oh, 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 hang on, I thought that was at him. <laughs> so I just got fingered. <laughs> <laughs> for those at home, I was just letting the people at home know that Jess fingered me, that's all. <laughs> I don't know why you reacted like that. That was weird. How many shows have you seen? At the uh, 60 ish, probably. That is fucking yeah. intense. <laughs> yep. Anyone Agreed. beat that? Anyone here beat six? Oh. oh. How many? 73. 73. Okay. And you came to my show. And you're a really nice guy. Thank you. <laughs> Would you put this show in the top 72? <laughs> yes. Oh, that's pretty good. Was it better than Matt's show? <laughs> No comments. No, no, oh, wow. I, I put you in a terrible wow. position there. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Cool. It's great to have Mesa here, considering that we are at a comedy festival with 600-plus uh, shows. Comedians all over the world come here, and we have got our friend Nick Mason, who's not even doing his show to be part of it. it is, You're welcome. You, that's how I'm much... A, I'm the most refreshed guest you could have possibly gotten, I think. Everybody else is just ruined. For the last so. 22 nights off. Yeah. It's great to have you here. And yeah. as, as a great shirt. Thank you. Thank you. Feel good about it. It's not all comedy, guys. <laughs> Some of it will be complimentary. <laughs> Some of it's just friendship. Well, before we get into the report side of things, I've got I've just been reminded by my own brain to tell you uh, that there if, if you, <laughs> it's just it. Yeah. <laughs> if you need to get up uh, to go to the the John, as I call it, or the toilets, uh. as you plebeians call it, uh, or to get a drink or anything, there is a camera there, so you will have to either navigate that or sit there and shit yourself. <laughs> Two options, two options. <laughs> those are the options, those, those are the options. Because we are, we are filming for the first ever time th this live podcast, so... Um, <laughs> this might last the whole episode, we've got to write this out. <laughs> You're an idiot. Uh, 
<laughs> We've got to jump into this report because um, it is actually Jess's turn t- to do a report. But because she woke up with a migraine this morning at 12 o'clock, the report was delegated to myself. <laughs> <laughs> but she'd obviously written the report. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she had... Ri- I'll, actually, I'll start reading the report and I'll, t- I'll tell you stop <laughs> when, <laughs> when Jess's report finishes and mine begins. <laughs> So you two already know what the topic is, so I guess yeah, it's up so to Jess me and Mason. Ooh, here we go. So can I pretend to not know? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Soph says yes. Yeah. You can't be trusted. You can't be trusted. All right. All right, so if you haven't heard the show before, we uh, usually start with a question to get us on topic. And my question is... Dave wrote the question. <laughs> yeah. I Jess did not write the question. She doesn't write questions. <laughs> the question is for Meso and Matt, and then for you guys afterwards. What... <laughs> Mythical creature is Scotland's national animal. Oh, my animal. God. Scotland's Billy Connolly. <laughs> 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 He's pretty mythical. He's pretty mythical. Mason, do you have any ideas? That is, that's got to be the easiest question that's been asked on this show. I think so. We're, we're going to have to dance around it for a little bit, I think. Yeah. Good, good work with Billy Connolly there. Just some joke answers. If, what if I was to tell you that the... Uh, Haggis. <laughs> <laughs> Stinginess. <laughs> Is that a well-known Scottish trait? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> like <a> stingy bastards. <laughs> what if I was to tell you that it's probably not what you think, oh. and it is? What, what do you think it is, Matt? Loch Ness monster. It is. Uh, it is actually a unicorn. Ah. That is their genuinely their national animal. And my follow-up question was going to be because I thought you might get that. What should be Scotland's national animal? Billy Connolly. Yes. <laughs> Matt, do you want to have one more go? On? I knew that, actually. Because, you know, my surname, Stuart, is relatively Scottish. Really? You haven't mentioned that 800 times on this podcast. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm very stingy, May, so I think that's where he got that from. Uh, what were we... I forgot where that sentence was meant to go. <laughs> it's the Loch Ness Monster, ladies and gentlemen! Hey! That is our, our topic today. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't boo that. that, 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 that <laughs> it would have been, been a long, long one now. <laughs> You hate everything. <laughs> <laughs> fair, yeah, fair, yeah. fair. Uh, so we, we've got the Loch Ness monster. That is our, our topic today. Have you guys been to Loch Ness? No, anywhere? never. No. I, w- I wanted to because I was in Edinburgh last year and I was like, it's surely just up the road. <laughs> it's quite it? far. <laughs> and I was close. like, mm, nah. Were you, were you hoping to walk to Loch Ness? I was going to walk, but I thought like maybe a bus... Well, I'll make up for you because... Uh, Again, not all funny. I think, I think I've seen an episode of The Goodies where they went to Loch Ness or it might have been an episode where they just hit each other with sticks for 22 minutes. I'm really not sure. <laughs> I've seen an episode of The Goodies. Though. <laughs> You've seen one episode. Yeah. <laughs> now, well, don't worry. I'm glad I'm doing the report, not you, Jess, because I've actually been to Loch Ness twice. Been on twice. Uh, growing oh, okay. up in the affluent east when I was 11, my parents took me to of course, Scotland. Yeah. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, when I was 23, I, both times I went on the river cruise and what you do is you sort of look out for the Loch Ness Monster and I was much more dedicated when I was 11. I, <laughs> I thought I was going to see him. Neither time I saw it, but I, uh, I'm still fascinated by Loch Ness. So let's do this. For those that don't know, Loch Ness is a large, deep freshwater loch in the Scottish Highlands, which is... If you don't know what a loch is, what is a loch? A loch is the Irish, Scottish, Gaelic <laughs> and Scots word for a lake. He has an answer for everything, don't try. <laughs> no, <laughs> He clicks on every hyperlink in Wikipedia. <laughs> Just in case. 696 links to go. <laughs> uh, Loch Ness is the largest Scottish loch by surface area. It's 22 square miles or 56 square kilometres. Loch Lomond is bigger than it, but because of its depth, the uh, Loch Ness, it is... Uh, the, uh, it has more fresh water than all lakes in England and Wales combined. So cop that, England and Wales! Yes! <laughs> If it, if it was drained, it could hold the population of the world more than ten times over. Wait, what, what does that mean? <laughs> and, and, who, and who builds those statistics? What madman? What, uh, this is what if, if this you is melted us down? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, no, if, the la- if, if there's no water in the lake, it's so big. You can and we all it. just stood next to each other. Mm. So if you wanted to turn Loch Ness into some sort of mass grave for the entire <laughs> planet... We could and I do. <laughs> oh, D- Dave started early with the mass graves. Yeah. That's interesting. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> oh. Oh. I have to tiptoe around every subject because they all link back to Nazis somehow. For no, God's Dave. sake, I just want to talk about mass graves for ten minutes, okay? <laughs> God's sake. Uh, now, the earliest... Oh, actually, at its deepest point, it's 230 metres deep. So, that is pretty deep. <laughs> Again, not all funny. Mm. 
All funny, all funny. <laughs> Uh, the earliest report of a monster in the vicinity of... Oh, by the way, I've already stopped Jess's Oh, report. yeah, I'm done. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, is... we started reading, I was like, whoa. <laughs> hey, and Dave, should you, should you also um, warn everyone about what happens next door? At the oh, All right, so every <laughs> oh, week sake. there is a, re- a wrestling live show next door and it goes off. And we always go, go fuck yourselves. And people at home are probably thinking, who are they talking to? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's you guys, the live audience. So that's just for... A, Bit of context there. I thought Jess was getting ready to get. I'm going to. <laughs> Today's the day. <laughs> I'm taking a fight Jess with those wrestling cunts. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that you might be sick, Jess, uh, karma-wise, because of a certain rant against an 18-year-old uh, <laughs> Bindi Irwin last week? I don't think there's a connection, and I stand by my opinions. <laughs> I think that could be. Now the. Uh, She's the just so cold. Oh no. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the earliest report of a monster in the vicinity of Loch Ness appears in The Life of St. Columba, which is a book written in the 6th century AD, according to the story, which was written about a century after the events described, so you know it's reliable. <laughs> Irish monk St. Columba, who this whole story is about, was staying uh, near Loch Ness with his companions when he encountered local residents burying a man by the River Ness. They explained that the man was swimming in the river and he was attacked by a water beast which mauled him and dragged him under the water. So they were probably just trying to cover up a murder. That is <laughs> essentially what has happened there. As a, a, a water beast. What are you guys doing there with that body? No, no, not us. Don't. We didn't do it. A, a, a water beast did. So that answers that question. Yeah. A water beast carrying a sword. <laughs> You examine those wounds. Good day, sir. <laughs> uh, Columba sent a follower to swim across the river. So cowardly. Did not go himself. Did not go himself. To try and sort out this water beast that he'd heard about. Apparently, the beast approached him. But Columba, still on the shore, made the sign of the cross. Another very cowardly way to protect someone. <laughs> Don't worry, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't always work. It does, does not always work. Do you think he did that? <laughs> Yeah, that's probably it, yeah. Columbus said... He probably just threw, like, communion wafers, in, wafers into the water. <laughs> like, Feeding like the duck ninja star. stars. Yeah, all that. Oh, <laughs> you, okay, yours was cuter. All right. <laughs> <laughs> nah, fair enough. <laughs> he said, go no further. Do not touch the man. Go back at once. The creature stopped, stopped as if it had been pulled back with ropes and it fled under the water. Columbus' men gave thanks for what they perceived as a miracle. Can you give us an example of what it would look like to, uh, to um, be pulled back by the reins? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> and they're all like, miracle. So basically everyone had an angle here. Like, Columba gets a, a miracle. Oh, yeah. He looks like he's doing a job and they get away with murder. Murder, exactly, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some guy that, like, stole, like, the town's soup or something. <laughs> soup? So he got soup. So everyone wins. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's Stole winner, baby. the town's soup. <laughs> that was your go-to. You know how all small towns have a big vat of soup? Oh, I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Keeps them warm in the winter. I'm a country gal, yeah. I know. <laughs> That's right. And they're, they're so no, stingy. you're not. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're also from the affluent east, please. <laughs> uh, it is said that Columba banished the ferocious water beasts to the depths of the river, which uh, the River Ness, which uh, flows from the north end of the loch. So he didn't even let it hang out in the loch anymore. Uh, Columba <laughs> is today credited with spreading Christianity in what is today Scotland. So that is probably why Scotland is Christian. <laughs> <laughs> Just because he did that. That's so good. That's not the sign of the cross, is it? No. No. It's like this. They go... Uh... <laughs> But you're thinking, honest, you're thinking of Madonna. That's, oh, Madonna. Yeah, that's Madonna. Oh, yeah, that's really, yeah, yeah. Be honest. You're a, I need you to imagine you're, you're a crazy giant sea monster. What's scarier? <laughs> or this? <laughs> I'd be t- if, I, if, someone, if I was walking to my car and I looked over and someone was doing that, yeah. <laughs> like eyeballing me, <laughs> I'd shit myself. I f- <laughs> Dave, I feel you could do that without the sign of the cross. It's, mm-hmm. it's all in the yeah. eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if anything, the cross sort of takes away from the gaze a little bit. Believers in the monster point to this story, the story that I just told you, uh, as evidence for the creature's existence as early as the 6th century. 
Skeptics questioned the narrative's reliability, noting that water beast stories were extremely common in medieval times. But so were water beasts. And so. murders, probably. <laughs> and murders. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, every time someone died. Water beast. <laughs> <laughs> Struck again. <laughs> uh, then we've got to cut 1,200 years uh, to 1871. Or 1872. Both good years. <laughs> you? That w- I wasn't going to say also 1872. I just needed you to say that. Well, you, did you mean 1972? <laughs> <laughs> no. Unlike you, I read the date as it's written down. I'm confused 1871 by that or 1872. Unsure of the year, I'll tell you why. A Scottish man uh, known to history as D. Mackenzie, would not give his first name, he reportedly saw an object resembling a log or an upturned boat, quote, wriggling and churning in the water in Loch Ness. The object moved slowly at first, disappearing at faster speed. Dee McKenzie uh, sent his story into uh, a newspaper in 1934, a mere 62 years later, <laughs> shortly after popular interest in the monster had increased. And this is what he wait, wrote. He said, wait, it looked like a log. Yeah. <laughs> I know what that must be. <laughs> or, a, or an upturned boat. On a lock, can you imagine such a thing? Nah, yeah, I know, yeah. They don't make sense. I know what makes sense. It could have been Billy Connolly riffing as a yeah. log. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> He's so versatile. He is versatile. Uh, this, w- this is what he wrote into the newspaper. I saw it about 1871 or 1872. As near as I can remember now. I was on the rock above... Insert Scottish word here. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously can't read that. No, nah, give it a whirl. A brican. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> I don't know that you did. The <laughs> Brickin. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a go with that? Let's all have a go with that. <laughs> nah, it's a Brickin. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a Bria Chan. It's Japanese. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So he briefly went to Japan. That's how unreliable this story is. Out ha- of shepherd's pie. <laughs> hey? Is that a thing? Is that a. No? What? <laughs> it's a thing for Dave. Oh, in Japan. Yeah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. What do you have? Shepherd's pie and garlic bread. Sher- Shepherd's pie and garlic bread. He's so cultured. Oh man, <laughs> Sushi- he loves it. He loves to soak up culture. Yeah, sushi can go fuck. If you if you're not even gonna get your own in jokes, mate, then what am I fucking doing here? <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. Uh, he wrote uh, th- when he was in Abrikan. He uh, I saw what I took to be a log of wood coming across the log. <laughs> the water was very calm at the time. It was about twelve o'clock on a grand sunny day. So that was. So it was impossible. <laughs> the wrestling has started, ladies and gentlemen. Go fuck it We are not at all ready to rumble. It's <laughs> very upsetting. I'm trying to have a civilised bloody no. comedy show here. Just and these fuck up for... Uh, <laughs> I was going to, I was about to go strong there. <laughs> you these know I went strong earlier. I think you can do it. Okay. These... Nah, good on. No, now they're just, <laughs> now they're just politely clapping. That looks clapping. like a polite I golf know. clap. Oh, very good. Please welcome to the stage, Deathmonger. <laughs> oh, very good. Um, oh, so I was going to say, he said, um, the end of the quote was, it was about 12 o'clock on a grand sunny day, so that it was impossible for me to be mistaken. <laughs> he wasn't <laughs> even sure what year this happened. <laughs> but it uh, was definitely sunny. Definitely. He remembers that. He, that. And that is not a mistake. 62 years is a long time to remember back. I remember uh, 62 years ago when I was... Uh, <laughs> I think I was just about to retire from my, <laughs> my third job. Uh, Wait, what? <laughs> I'm really old. <laughs> He's pretty old. Nailed it. Stole your thunder, fucko. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Now, uh, modern interest in the monster was sparked by a sighting on the 22nd... Oh, cut. Shut up! Yes, Dave. For the people at home, Jess was telling Dave to shut up. <laughs> Sorry, Dave, you're beautiful. Modern interest in the monster was sparked uh, by... Don't talk quieter. (laughs) (laughs) By a sighting. (laughs) On the 22nd of July, 1933, when a man called George Spicer and his wife saw a, quote, most extraordinary form of animal. What was her name? Mrs. Good question. uh, Georgina Spicer. (laughs) No one ever knows the wife's name. name. Names attract. George and Georgina. Uh, they, uh, they saw this most extraordinary form of animal cross the road in front of their car. They described the creature as having a large body, about 1.2 metres high, 8 metres long, and a long, wavy, narrow neck, slightly thicker than an elephant's trunk. Which, as we all know, is how we measure how thick things are. <laughs> the trunk was as long as 3 to 4 metres 
long. Was they, it wearing a bow tie? It was <laughs> bow tieless. Repeat bow tieless. <laughs> they also said they saw no limbs. Repeat. How did it, it was limbless. <laughs> <laughs> How did it push the button? At the, at the crossing. It's <laughs> waiting. Yeah. It's just waiting. Oh, waiting for somebody else. else to come along. Yeah. Waiting for a chicken to come along. Oh, yeah. Cross the road with him. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's not yeah. all good. <laughs> Taking a lot of very strong painkillers. <laughs> uh, it lurched across the road uh, 20 metres away, uh, leaving a broken trail of undergrowth in its wake, and then it went back into the lock. So it was out of the water. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was on a day trip. It was on... <laughs> Small danger. The next month, August 1933, a motorcyclist, Arthur Grant, claimed to have nearly hit a creature at about 1 a.m. on a moonlit night. So that's trustworthy as well, isn't it? This thing's out all the time. It's out at <laughs> midday, it's out at night. What's it doing? What's it, what are you doing? No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, yeah, is it nocturnal? Is it the opposite of nocturnal? It's a full and buried life. <laughs> it's out and about. Uh, it's, not, it's not nocturnal, it's locturnal. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Round of applause. Thank you, Matt. Stewart, 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 Stewart. He is checking the football <laughs> scores. <laughs> nah, I reckon he's earned it. Let him. Hey. All right, Matt, give us a quick footy update. Mm-hmm. He's checking. Hang on. You keep going, Al. Okay, no worries. You'll yell out. No worries. Yeah, great. <laughs> His priorities are in order, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, this motorcyclist, Grant, who was a veterinary student, described it as a cross between a seal and a plesiosaur, which obviously as a vet you come across every day of the week. <laughs> he produced a sketch of the creature. It was examined by famous British zoologist Nessie Skeptic Maurice Burton, who stated it was consistent with the appearance and behaviour of an otter. <laughs> Ooh. A giant fucking otter. <laughs> That's pretty scary. Also, I, for a second there, I thought the name of the zoologist was going to be Nessie Skeptic and I was like, that's, that'd be very convenient, right? That is great. Uh, a few months later, <laughs> <laughs> November 1933, still 1933, it's going through the roof, this thing. The first alleged photograph of Nessie was taken. It was slightly blurred, aren't they always? <laughs> and it has been noted that uh, if one looks closely, the head of a dog can be seen. <laughs> but where? No one knows. <laughs> The person who took the photo, Gray, had taken his Labrador for a walk that day. <laughs> it is suspected that the photograph depicts his dog fetching a stick from the lock. Yeah. <laughs> I just love that. Is that He's that like, proof, it's proof. Is that just that really famous photo? Like no, we're not up to the really, okay. really famous one. That if I say Loch Ness Monster, you all imagine. We are very close to that. Okay. But uh, with the Labrador style photo, our old mate uh, skeptic Maurice Burton, Nessie skeptic, Nessie skeptic. <laughs> had a look and guess what he saw? What? Quote, when pr- blown up and projected on the screen, it revealed, quote, an otter rolling on the surface in characteristic fashion. <laughs> <laughs> this guy just sees otters everywhere. <laughs> Look at that face. Face of an otter, if I've ever seen one. <laughs> it's like you go to a vet. <laughs> Matt, do something an otter would do. No, I think, that's, I think that is his otter impression. <laughs> It's very good. <laughs> That's much more otter-like than something that looks like... Someone's described as looking like a dinosaur. And the guy's gone, classic otter. <laughs> Are we sure it wasn't an otter? It, it, made, it, say, it, it had no limbs and a three-metre-long trunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I've Wait, what am I thinking of? <laughs> You're thinking of a plesiosaur. Ah, oh, yep, sorry. We're never sure what you're thinking of. <laughs> I've got a note here that the largest otter, I looked it up, there's 13 species of otter, the largest one is 45 kilos, and that's like the biggest one ever. 45 kilos. See, hey, wait, what, what do you weigh again? Is that, that is bigger than you. 52, right? No, no, oh. it's slightly small. So imagine me in otter form. <laughs> <laughs> Minus I always like, do. Chop off my leg or something. <laughs> So this is so clearly a Dave report because I would not have looked that up. <laughs> you know? Any of it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I looked up Loch Ness. Nailed it. <laughs> Dave's more of a twink than an otter, though, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the last guest appearance he ever did. I reckon we'll have you back, Mesa. Thanks, Val. <laughs> yeah, the others will veto me. 
1933, you probably noticed, there's like four sightings in 1933, all possibly otters. But that's when the lo- legend really took off uh, around the world. It's been claimed that sightings of the monster increased after a road was built along the lock in that year, early 1933, bringing workers and tourists to a formerly isolated area. Locals deny this, saying it, was, it wasn't isolated before, but what you and I think is isolated is very different to what people from the Scottish Highlands think is isolated. <laughs> we have to keep that in mind. <laughs> Let's all have a moment just to think about that. <laughs> just think about it. You get it. Yeah. Uh, 1934. Inspired by all the talk of uh, the monster Edward Mountain, who was the founder of Eagle Star... That's a good name. That's a great yeah, so name. Cool. <laughs> But your Eddie name, Mountain. Your name is Mountain. You found an insurance company. What would you call it? What would you call your insurance company? Edward Eddie Insurance. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty good. Eagle Star Insurance. Which insurance. <laughs> Eagle Look, Star I, Insurance. I'm just reading it off the page. That's what it says. Look right there. It <laughs> says insurance, dickhead. <laughs> insurance. Oh. God, I've been mispronouncing C for years. <laughs> Uh, Eagle Star Insurance. I can't even do my mispronunciation. Uh, which is, uh, it became one of the UK's largest uh, insurance companies. He decided to finance a search for the monster. He wanted to find the monster. Oh. <laughs> he got 20 men with binoculars and. So these 20 guys have got binoculars, cameras. They position themselves around the lock from 9 till 6 every day for five straight weeks. Five straight weeks. They were paid two pounds per week to sit by the lock. Uh, They also offered a bonus of £10.50, so their whole week's wage for five weeks, if they got a successful picture of the monster. So because of that, it's not unexpected that some of them put in some pretty blurry photos. 21 photographs were taken, none considered conclusive. So that guy wasted lots and lots of money. Now, later in the year 1934, the most famous photo of the monster came up. If you uh, Google Loch Ness Monster right, right now, 80 years later, it still says, well, it, it still says, would you like to click on images? And then you <laughs> click on <them> this, <laughs> this one. That's what to this very day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, it, it, this is referred to as the surgeon's photo. The surgeon's photo. Uh, the surgeon's photograph is reportedly the first photo of the creature's head and neck. So before that, it was all ass shots. All. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, at the end of uh, 1933, everybody, the Daily Mail, which was a uh, piece of shit then, and is a uh, piece of shit now. <laughs> Whoa! Dave, uh, taking down the big guns. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, taking it... <laughs> no, they're widely condemned. Yeah, nah, fuck them. Yeah. 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 Take Bin- on somebody your own size, like Bindi Irwin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely my own size. <laughs> She's just so patronising! <laughs> fuck off. And do you know what? After that, so many people, a lot in this room... Tagged me in her Instagram photos. Oh, <laughs> poor fool. And then I just have to look at it again. <laughs> like, Shut up, Bindi, you sure? It's been a big week. <laughs> if we could get her as a guest on the podcast, that would be. But obviously, she wouldn't have time to listen back to the back catalogue. So, what are the chances? Oh, she, she probably. She'd listen to the Steve Irwin one. Yeah, right. I was gonna say, what are the chances of her picking that episode, the one about her dad? <laughs> yeah, probably the first one I'd listen to as well. Uh, the Daily Mail, end of 1933, taking advantage of this new Nessie craze that's sweeping the world. Uh, they hired a famous... Big the Nessie craze. The yeah. Nessie craze. It was a different time. They hired biggest, uh, biggest, the famous big game hunter, Marmaduke Weatherall. Fuck yes! Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so Fuck yes! I knew Jess would love that. Marmaduke. The Duke. The Duke. They oh. said... Uh, they asked him... <laughs> they got the Duke to travel up to the lo- uh, Loch Ness to see if he could find the monster. He found no monster. However, in December, he found what he thought to be enormous tracks. Enormous footprints on the shore of the lock leading to the water. So he took photos of these, published in the Daily Mail. Unfortunately, researchers from the Natural History Museum examined the tracks and they had been made with a dried hippo's foot. Ew. Uh, the kind that were Better po- than a moist hippo's foot. Yeah. <laughs> the kind that were popularly, popularly used as umbrella stands at the time. <laughs> It was a different time. <laughs> yeah, it definitely was. Humiliated, Weatherall retreated. He retreated from public view, so he was widely laughed at because he'd published photos of a hippo's foot in Scotland, and uh, 
because of this. That was very taboo at the time. You yeah. did not take a photo oh, of a hippo's foot. Oh. Mm, no, no, no. <laughs> a few months later, the Loch Ness Monster ag- again made headlines when a uh, highly respected surgeon and gynaecologist, Colonel Robert Wilson, came forward with a picture that appeared to show a sea serpent rising out of the water of the loch. He's a colonel. Colonel. And a gynaecologist. <laughs> and a surgeon. I'm not going to that guy. <laughs> I, I reckon I would. <laughs> For all your gynecological needs? Yes. <laughs> of which I have many. <laughs> Jess, thank you. I'm going to need to have a chat business. to Matt later. Mm. Uh, Wilson, claimed <laughs> Wilson claimed that he took the photograph early in the morning, April 19, 1934, when driving along the northern shore of Loch Ness. He said he saw, uh, noticed something moving in the water, stopped his car, took four photos, and when he uh, exposed them... Two of them came out clearly, so he's got two photos. For a number of years, the photo was considered evidence of the monster. So it was, this was published, everyone's like, oh, it exists. Skeptics dismissed Sorry, it. I think they're Scottish, so what would they have said? Oop. <laughs> <laughs> that was seven words condensed into one. So my grandfather was born in Scotland and came to Australia like in the 1930s, and then, no, 1925 to be exact. And uh, when I was on this trip to Loch Ness, we went to where he was born, a town called Straven, and we went to uh, the farm, which is still owned by relatives of his, and we met the, the farmer who owns the farm. He was like a guy in his late 70s at the time, and I could not understand <laughs> a word he said. I was 11, and I was just going, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. It, was, it was just like, oh, my, 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 oh, my, my. And then he would just pause and go, oh, I, oh, I. That's the only thing I knew. So I could not understand a word. And my mum's just like not nudging me, like, just smile, just smile. This is your great, great cousin or something. <laughs> your face was fucked. My face was directly quoting his Do face. Do it again. Oh, man. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, for a number of years, uh, this was, photo was considered evidence. Skeptics dismissed it as driftwood. A bird or an otter? <laughs> <laughs> fucking dude. Uh, the, sca- uh, the photo's scale was controversial because it was seen, it looked like it had been zoomed in on and, and then cropped. Because uh, uh, then they found an uncropped shot which made it look very, very small in comparison to the waves around it. So people were dubious of it. But no one analysed the photo properly for 50 years until in 1984, Stuart Campbell analysed the photo in a 1984 article in the British... <laughs> The British Journal of Photography. Jess, I'm sure you subscribe to that as a big photography fan. Yep. Great. Uh, so this guy analysed the photo and he said uh, the object in the water c- in the photo could only be two or three feet long at most. I like Dave standing yeah, at my he's standing, height. Yeah. <laughs> hey, little fella. Hello. Hey. Are you standing because there's a revelation coming? Is that, is that what's he's going he's to drop oh. some truth bombs. Here we go. <coughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> This guy concluded that it was either a bird or an otter. Another fucking yeah. otter. But, but he was wrong. <laughs> Remember our old mate Marmaduke Wetherill? How could we ever forget? Now you turned yes. to a preacher and I oh love yeah. it. The hunter, who has just become the hunter. It only works if it become the hunted. <laughs> He's the one that was embarrassed by the Daily Mail publishing his monster tracks that, they t- that turned out to be a hoax, probably that they did in the first place, and then they made fun of him. Well, he wanted revenge on the old Daily Mail. He was the one that copped all the heat. Not them. He quote, uh, this is a quote. We'll give them their monster. His son later remembered him saying, which is a great line. <laughs> He's upset we've pointed out that he's standing up and now he has to lean no, into every to. single thing. Yeah. <coughs> uh, so Ma- Marmaduke Duke got together with his son Ian, his son-in-law... Ian. Mm. Marmaduke called his son Ian. Ian. What an asshole. <laughs> what a dog. Hey? Yeah. Conan. I've, I've lived Conan. a blessed life with the best name in the world. <laughs> Fuck my son. Yeah. <laughs> Big time. Yeah. Big time. Well, he's got Ian. He's also got his son-in-law, who's a sculpture specialist named Christian... Still not great, no. And an an insurance agent named Maurice Chambers. Maurice! Not bad. Or Morris Chambers. Probably Maurice Chambers. We'll go with that. (laughs) Uh, They bought a toy submarine from a local supermarket. (laughs) What? And built a monster's neck from wood putty. After testing it at a local pond, 
The group went to Loch Ness where Ian Wetherill, the son, took the photos uh, near... Ex- Scottish word, tea house. <laughs> Alt Sai. Alt Sai tea house. When they heard... <laughs> when they heard... <laughs> oh, oh, I. <laughs> uh, when they heard a water bailiff, which is like a cop that patrols the lock, approaching, Marmaduke sank That's the mock... That's great. <laughs> lock <laughs> cop! <laughs> lock cop is very good. <laughs> Uh, Scotland's uh, number one grossing cop drama. <laughs> lock cop. CSI lock cop. <laughs> it's a bit of driftwood again. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, uh. <laughs> we thought it was a murder, but it was just it was just a water beast again. <laughs> so every week is the same. Yeah. Lock cop and two smoking barrels. Mm. That's pretty not good. bad. That's not bad. Pretty good. That's uh, it's, it's a pretty good pun. <laughs> oh, so anyway, he, here's the lock cop coming. So Duke. Being the hunter guy, he uh, takes his foot out and ki- uh, kicks the submarine out, which sinks. Shit our submarine, by the way. Uh, yeah, from a wait, supermarket. But they're also... That's what they're meant to do. <laughs> <laughs> really good submarine. Really good submarine. Uh, which is presumably still somewhere in Loch Ness. Uh, the insurance man Chambers gave the photograph uh, to Wilson, a gynecologist. Uh, he enjoyed a uh, good practical joke, a friend of theirs. He bought uh, the photos uh, to a chemist, which developed them. Uh, then he sold the photos to the Daily Mail, who announced that the monster had been photographed. This whole story was secret until 1994, when the sculptor, Christian Sperling, before his death at the age of 90, on his deathbed, confessed to his involvement in the Loch Ness monster plot. I sort of tuned out for a bit. You know, yeah, on Law, you know, on Law and Order, when there's there's a scene transition, it's like dunk dunk. I imagine on Lock Cop, it's like an excruciating <laughs> bagpipe solo for like two full minutes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, could you say the whole thing again? <laughs> so it's, well, it's, it's, like wa- that. it's like looks like this one was a water beast. <laughs> 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 so, you want a summary? Yes, if you could. <laughs> Oh, I, oh, I. <laughs> and uh, so we're up to... Uh, they up put to a fake submarine there. in there. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool, great. Uh, in 1977, Anthony Doc Shields, carping, carping, camping, <laughs> on a carpet. Dave's had a stroke. Uh, it's all right. We've only got ten minutes to go. I can make this. Uh, camping next to Urquhart Castle, which is a beautiful castle there. If you've been there, of course, I have twice, unlike these plebeians. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he took some of the clearest pictures of the monster that have uh, ever been photographed. Shields, who is a magician, psychic, and painter. <laughs> so a pretty rad dude. I'd like him at a dinner party, that's for sure. Yeah, I know you're all about to trust what he saw, but uh, <laughs> let me... He let also me, uh, uh, also dabbles in gynecology. He's a gyna... Oh. Dabbles. He's a dabbler. He dabbles. Oh, don't dabble down there. <laughs> This is my favourite thing I read about uh, Doc, Doc Shields. Quote, he had several solo exhibitions in London before then leaving St Ives where he lived following a drunken incident in which he threatened a police officer with a gun that he had obtained from his painter friend, friend, Terry Frost. He considers himself himself an artist first and foremost and his life's work to be a form of surrealism that he refers to as... Gynecology. (laughs) I paint primarily with this gun. I don't know if that's if it's successful, but, you know. So we all trust this guy now. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. He claimed to have summoned the Loch Ness Monster out of the water. He later described it as an elephant squid, claiming the long neck shown in the photograph is actually the squid's trunk and the white spot at the base of the neck is its eye. I've looked at the photo. That is... That, no. <laughs> no. No, Doc. Uh, due to the lack of ripples, it has been declared a hoax by a number of people and received the name the Loch Ness Muppet. <laughs> <laughs> and I've seen it, and it looks like a dinosaur in a bathtub. Or an otter! <laughs> in a bathtub. Did you write that down? No, I didn't, but... Um, that was off the cuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, very good. <laughs> he rarely works off the cuff, Dave, so... Yeah. <laughs> There's a golf club for your off-the-cuff work there. That's Thank pretty you. good. The same yeah. clap that Murderhorn next door got. <laughs> Murderhorn? <laughs> I called him something, Murder Face, you know. Do you remember? Murder Death. Oh, he does talk. <laughs> <laughs> that, 
Two words you can understand from the Scots. He only uh, he murder o- and death. <laughs> he only he only boos and threatens. So it's just boo, murder, death. <laughs> All of you. I oh, will take it. Who I? Who are? Uh, 1987 Operation Deep Scan was conducted, and that is the biggest uh, sonar search that they've ev- ever done. It cost them one million pounds. Operation Deep Scan. Gynecology. <laughs> <laughs> is, that what, is that what you were? were no, you, that wasn't where no? I was going, okay. but. <laughs> Thanks for going there. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> hey, Dave, when you edit this... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to boost the volume on that little bit you said yeah. before? Yeah. <laughs> Just have that. that on repeat for a uh, solid three minutes. That was my request, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just about going, gynecologist, gynecologist. <laughs> gynecologist. Wicka, wicka, wicka. <laughs> Break it down, man. Operation Deep Scan, 1987. 24 boats equipped with echo sounder equipment were deployed across the width of the lock and simultaneously sent acoustic waves across it. So how many pairs of binoculars? How many? Uh, <laughs> six, 600 pairs of binoculars. Well, that's Dave, a lot of binoculars. Dave, let's send some acoustic waves, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> Is that coming through? That's good stuff. Yeah. You're picking up those acoustic yeah. waves, Evan? <laughs> oh, he's getting them. His, his ears are bleeding. <laughs> uh, they, uh, after examining a sonar return indicating a large moving object at a depth of 180 metres near Urquhart Bay, uh, Lawrence, who's founder of Lawrence Electronics, said, there's something here that we don't understand and there's something here that's larger than a fish. Maybe some species that hasn't <laughs> been detected before. I don't know. Like an otter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They are larger, larger than, than fish. a fish, yeah. Oh. And can anyone here truly say that they understand the otter? No, exactly. That's beautiful. With their Thank long you. trunks and yeah. lack of limbs. Mm-hmm. Yep. They've baffled me for years. Oh. <laughs> Will they're we ever truly know the otter, though? <laughs> With their white eye at the base of the neck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they, did, they spent a million pounds, didn't exactly find anything. Uh, they this was the, the guy who owned the electrics company. Yeah, so he said that... So it was a sponsored... It's an ad, basically. Yeah, so he... They didn't find anything, and then... He it's a good ad. Yeah. Good ad. I'm thinking about going to buy some stuff from there after the show. Right, some 1980s uh, electronic sonar equipment. Well, yeah, whatever. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> what Anyone a, got the footy score? Yeah. Saints, up, Saints up by two. What? Saints up by two. Let's... Let's... I'm back in. Yeah. <laughs> Look, you're happy with that, but all I'm thinking is that you are looking up the footage. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, don't worry. I understand, mate. I do understand. Dave, we've got his money. It's fine. He can do whatever he wants. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm literally just <laughs> <laughs> Great. So it's a current score then. <laughs> so Half time. So there's no need for you to continue to look <laughs> for the next 10 minutes of the show. <laughs> don't even you support Matt, don't <laughs> you? Just said, yeah. He just said, I don't even support them, yet you... S- no, but he wanted. He wanted. He knew Matt needed to know. And What's your name, sir? What? Niall. Niall. I love you, Niall. <laughs> that's Ni- a fucking great name yeah, too. Yeah. Great name. Yeah. Niall. Yeah, he's just a big fan of bodies of water. He doesn't even care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. I've, I've I've been awake a really long time. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Took me a while. To I'm waiting for Dave to get it. <laughs> no, I know. Get. I'm trying to work in. Uh, shut up, man. I'll, I'm denialing you. <laughs> Yeah, I would have thought you'd have been working on some sort of de- uh, death on the River Nile. Is that death? the thing? Oh, yeah. Death on Nile, one of the greatest Agatha Christie <laughs> Pyro episodes. <laughs> books. Oh, man, it's so good. I challenge you to watch it and work out who you think did it. <laughs> and I won't spoil it because it's so good. It's got the guy from Starsky and Hutch in it. Whoa. The original. Be- ben Stiller. Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, ben Stiller and um, Owen Wilson are not in the film. Then but I don't am let them not put you watching off. it. I will off. only watch their films. <laughs> their cinematic masterpieces. Wedding Crashes? Love it. Great. Stop Story me. checks out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in 2003, the BBC sponsored a search of the lock using 600 sonar beams and satellite tracking. The search had sufficient resolution to identify a small boy. B-U-O-Y. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> we found a boy! <laughs> but they leave him there? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's not a monster. Leave him. There are some countries pronounce that buoy, and isn't that way better? Buoy's Bowie? better. So That's much confusing. Better. Yeah. Mm. Buoy. But uh, <laughs> so fun. Go again. Buoy. Everyone now. <laughs> 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 
he tried, tried his best. He's trying to say Bowie best. the whole show. <laughs> oh, I get you now. I get you. That is very That's good. Very good. <laughs> that is very, very good. Uh, they found a small buoy, uh, but no animal of substantial size was found, and despite their high hopes, I can't believe they had high hopes of actually mm. finding something, the scientists involved admitted that this proved the Loch Ness Monster was a myth. <laughs> Searching for the Loch Ness Monster aired on BBC One in 2003. Don't watch it, they didn't find anything. <laughs> Spoilers! <Yeah. laughs> oh, sorry about that. Uh, the most recent thing that I found on the Loch Ness Monster, April 19, 2014, it was reported that a satellite image on Apple Maps... Apple's version of uh, the mapping software. No, we, we know what not, maps are. Not required, that explanation. Yeah. If you have an iPhone. Um, <laughs> it showed what appeared to be a large creature, thought to be by some by, saw to be by some to be Loch, Loch Ness, that, uh, that was just below the surface There's of the lock. lock. The lock's far north... The, at, at the lock's, lock's far, far north, north, the image appeared, appeared about 30, 30 metres <laughs> long. Uh, possible explanations were the, the wake of a boat... <laughs> oh, is that an Apple Maps burn? That was an Apple Maps burn. <laughs> uh, yeah, fuck you, Apple Maps, you dickheads. Way off. For the listener at home, oh. that was, uh, if, it's, if it's Apple Maps, it was probably Big Bin. <laughs> Thank you. I don't think that's what he said. Uh, the, so it could have been Big Ben, it could have been uh, the boat itself. Are you uh, saying Big Bin? <laughs> Ben. Yeah, the bin industry, you know, Big Bin. <laughs> yeah. Don't fight Big Bin. That's right. You'll yeah. come off yeah. second best. Oh, so, no. s- some people re- refer, refer to the whole of Scotland as one Big Bin, but that is not me. <laughs> I am a big fan. Big fan. Big fan. Been there three times, so unlike these guys, am I right? <laughs> Nazi. <laughs> yes, the, the mortal enemy of the Scots. <laughs> I'm trying to get through. Possible explanations uh, for this Apple Maps thing were the wake of a boat, big bin, a seal, <laughs> floating wood, or an otter. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, that is my report on uh, Loch Ness. So now we're going to go. Uh, 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 that was our report. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. go, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> so, a, so another mystery. Little... We'll never know. Well, I want to go down the line here. Do you now believe in uh, the Loch Ness Monster or some sort of giant otter? I never stopped believing in the Loch Ness Monster. Never stopped believing? May so after that? I think it was probably a twink of some kind, <laughs> ultimately. <laughs> Maybe it was that boy you talked about earlier. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so... Hello. <laughs> Short answer, no. And uh, Matt Stewart, do you... Uh... Yeah, I now believe in otters. I do... <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give you a round of applause if you now believe in the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> <laughs> Big Ben. Big Ben believes. Mm. Give me a round of applause if you don't believe in the Loch Ness Monster. A few undersides. Uh, and give me a round of applause if you didn't give me a round of applause either of the f- first or second option. <laughs> and a round of applause for people who didn't give a round of applause then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got everyone. Okay, we got nailed everyone. Oh, okay, everyone's cool. in. Uh, everyone's everyone. involved. Everyone's cool, in. cool. That is, uh, that is my report. Thank you so much. for. Oh, I've got to give a big shout out to the people that suggested this. Oh, yeah. One of the few things that I Jess did, did was uh, tell me who <laughs> suggested it. That is your contribution, Jess. You we should also there, thank like? everyone who's come along. over the. This is the last one of the live pods for now. Oh, so totally. thanks so much everyone here today for coming along and everyone who's come in the past. and Anyone who will come in the future? Yes. So, good. <laughs> Anyone who likes coming is all <laughs> I'm saying. Which I think is most of us. No, uh, the Loch Ness Monster was suggested by... Um, <laughs> There's his regret face. <laughs> yeah. uh, regret face, come face, they're all the same. Right? <laughs> 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 oh, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> So, the Loch Ness Monster, we would like to thank, it was suggested by, uh, on email, a person called Angus, <laughs> probably Scottish, <laughs> uh, on Twitter, at Leonard Stales, thank you, Leonard, whose real name is Leonard Stales, there you go, <laughs> he got it, he got, he got his name, <laughs> uh, at Austin Brackets, also got their name, and also, uh, Callum BW, where'd you get Callum BW from? Email. Email. email, so thank you to those, so those uh, four, four people. Uh, can we have a big round of applause for our very special guest, Mr. Nick Mason? Oh, the you. man in the myth. Boo. 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 Of course, if you want to hear more of uh, Mason every single week, we can check out the weekly Planet podcast. But who doesn't? It's already so great. It's so, so great. 
Who I, doesn't? I wouldn't. Seriously. Who, who doesn't? doesn't? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who? That's fine. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, you should check it out. Is that why you're looking at me? Just to back you up there? <laughs> yeah. Dave yeah. was right. You should check it out. If you like comic book uh, movies. Check out the Matt Stewart episode. Oh, it's yeah. That was, that was fun. That was fun. Also, uh, if anyone here wants to come to my last show tonight at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival, it's uh, called Pretty Dry. It's at 7.30 at the Chinese Museum. Discount code, pretty podcast. I'll hand you a thing at the back of the room. Should I be saying this into the mic? Is that oh, what you're asking? Yeah, All right, great. Fine. Into the mic. like. <laughs> To be honest, I think it would be more tedious for people at home if you didn't say it into the mic <laughs> and there was just the 30 seconds of silence. I would have thought maybe you could edit it out. <laughs> oh, you could probably do that either way. All right, great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jess, Jess, you've also got your final show. Yes, my final show starts in half an hour um, and it's at the Greek Centre. I was going to say Greek Museum. <laughs> it's not. It's the Greek Centre. <laughs> And I think there's like five tickets left if anybody wants to come. Otherwise, fuck is. Um, <laughs> you missed your chance. <laughs> For greatness. Ooh. I'm so tired. <laughs> Poor old Jess, we made it. I'm thank you. Okay. Pray for Bop. Uh, thank you so much for coming out. Can we have a big round of applause to uh, Evan on sound and Craig yeah. on Ooh. camera today? Ooh. Thank you so much. Uh, but that is the end uh, of our final episode live at the Melbourne Comedy Festival. Thank you so much for coming out and to everyone who has come out. We'll be back in the studio next week. But until next time, we will say thank Let's you. Let's watch the second half downstairs. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>